welcome to this video tutorial of problems involving tangent lines to circles. Specifically the problem we considered in class, that of a belt wrapping around two gears. You see the problem in front of you. Perhaps you want to hit pause and try it out before we discuss it together. Well, we are going to discuss this problem together. And what we're first going to do is connect the two center points of the circles. We know how long that segment is. And then here's the key we need to draw in the radius from the center of the circle to the point of tangency and be careful how you draw it. It's not perfectly vertical. Think about where that belt is looping and where it's going to intersect or be tangent with the circle. And then what we're going to do is we are going to draw in the rectangle that would be formed. And we're going to mirror that down below as well. Drawing this picture correctly is going to be key on the test. Please make sure you draw it correctly and then draw in the fact that where the tangent line intersects the radius we get a right angle and the fact that we're getting a rectangle in that picture. So there's a lot of right angle symbols that we're going to draw in and actually the rectangle on the top of the picture is congruent to the rectangle on the bottom of the picture. So when we're doing this the line that we're highlighting in red up top is really going to be congruent to the line that we're highlighting in red on the bottom. Now to determine the length of that line, first of all in this problem we know that the radius of the smaller circle is 22 inches. We know that the distance between gears is 64 and the larger gear is 28 inches. Now opposite sides of a rectangle have to be congruent, so this is 22. And then because the whole large radius is 28, this other part has to be 6. So now if we consider the triangle that I've scribbled in blue and we draw it out separately, it looks something like this, where we've got a 6, where we've got the 64, which is that piece down in the middle, and we need to figure out this portion right here, which is the same as the top of the belt. So in order to do that, we can use the Pythagorean theorem a squared plus b squared equals c squared. 6 squared plus, I'm going to call it x squared, is equal to 64 squared. Watch out, the hypotenuse is actually that 64. Be careful, people get caught off guard by that at times. So we get 36 plus x squared is equal to whatever 64 squared is. Let's calculate that, it's 4096. We will subtract the 36 from both sides we get that x squared is 4060. And then we take the square root and that will obtain the value of x for us. So x is going to be the square root of 4060 and we're getting 63.72 to two decimal places. Now please store that as x in your calculator. That way you can be perfectly accurate and not lose track of the number of decimals going on. So I will store that as x in my calculator and I'm going to be super accurate with it. Now the next thing that we need to do is figure out this angle here that I just put in green in that triangle. It corresponds to this angle right here that I just put in green on the picture on the right. To find that, we know the adjacent side is 6. We know the hypotenuse is 64. Adjacent and hypotenuse would be ka. For cosine. So we would know that the inverse cosine of 6 divided by 64 is going to equal the measure of that angle. Again, I will go to my calculator and type that in. And again, I want to keep all the decimals with it so that I can be as accurate as possible. I'm getting 84.62 degrees right there. So this whole angle that I'm scribbling in green would be two of those. If I double that, 84.62, I'm keeping all the decimals, times 2 is 169.24 degrees. Now, as we discussed and saw in class, that angle will turn out to be the angle over here when considering that arc. So we would know that that arc, and I would allow you to use that on a test, that that arc is going to be 169.24 degrees. Now we still need its length, not just its degrees. So the length over here on the left would be a 169.24 out of 360. Now be careful, we're not doing area, we're doing circumference. 
2 pi times the radius. Now I'm keeping all of the decimals in my calculator again, and I'm going to use the pi button. I want to make sure that all of this is accurate. 169.24 divided by 360, but I'm keeping all the decimals, times 2 pi times 22. I'm getting 64.98 for the length of that arc on the left. However, one more thing needs to be included, and that would be the length of this arc over here on the right. We know that angle. To get the other angle, we would take 360 minus the 169.24. Now again, I'm keeping all the decimals. So 360 minus that 169.24 is 190.76. And when we come down here, we are going to calculate that length. I'm going to call it R for the right-hand side. 190.76 out of a full 360, again times the circumference. 2 pi, the radius of that circle is 28. Keeping all of the decimals in my calculator, I'm going to type that in and I get 93.22. So then when we want the overall length of our belt, the length of our belt is going to be two of those segments in red, which we see is 63.72. Again, I kept all the decimals on my calculator. Plus, it's going to be that left-hand side amount, which was 64.98. Plus, it's going to be the right-hand side amount, which was 93.22. We will sum those three things up. And again, I'm keeping all of the decimals on my calculator. I'm not rounding things. Please, if you could do the same, that would be highly appreciated. And it would cause you to be as accurate and precise as possible. I'm getting 285.64, and then we need a unit on the final answer. This, pro this problem is in inches, so we will express our final answer in inches. There it is, 285.64 inches. The other thing to really make sure you see is that these two angles involved in finding the fractions of the circles add up to 360. That can be very helpful in solving this problem.